and welcome to the Lake District. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm spending an entire week exploring this beautiful part of the UK with my other half, Andy. We had an epic hike yesterday and so we're deciding to keep it nice and local and nice and easy. We're actually staying in an apartment just at the other end of this square here and so we're gonna walk straight out the door onto a trail up to a Castle Rig stone circle that should only be a few kilometers. We're then gonna come back here, have some food and then much later on this afternoon, we're gonna head out on a circular walk up to Latrig in the hope of getting to see a lovely sunset. The Old Trails app does skirt you along the side of the Upper Fitz Park, but I have to say that every single time that I come up to the Lake District, and particularly when I'm in the north, I always love just to come wandering through this park because it is just one of the most beautiful and well manicured parks. And a lot of the gardeners are out at the moment just mowing all of those lawn tennis courts and the putt putts that are around the edges of them. The first part of the trail takes us on the old railway line that runs from Keswick to Threlkeld. And this is the old railway station and it looks like it's been converted into a hotel, but it looks incredibly quiet. I don't know if it's closed at the moment or if maybe just all of the guests have already headed out for the day. I had not expected that we were going to be doing quite the uphill climb that this part of the trail is taking us on. And unfortunately, even though it looks like a really nice quiet country lane, there aren't any footpaths because it leads up to a very popular Castle Rickstone Circle. There's quite a lot of people who've chosen to drive up here and you can park, I think, 0.3 of a kilometre away from the circle. And so it's been quite busy with a lot of traffic and there's also been a RV that's come up with a lot of fumes pumping out of it, I think, as it's trying to get up this hill. So not the most pleasant, but I'm hoping once we get to the stone circle and we do the circular loop back around, the trail might be a little bit more pleasant than this too. Well, that was quite fortunate. No sooner have we arrived, a huge group of people all just seemed to leave. It was as though they were part of a coach party and their tour leader was like, right, we're off, but there was no coach parked outside. So I think it's just been perfect timing. There's still a lot of people here because we're just coming up to midday. The Stone Circle, I'm reading different things online. The English Heritage said that it was probably constructed about 3000 BC, but the National Trust plaques here are saying it was 4,500 years ago. They were likely constructed by the prehistoric farmers who came here to farm on the fertile lands. And they'll have been used as a place to be able to do things like rituals and ceremonies, but they'll have also have sold goods here and also just talked about situations such as like when they're gonna be moving their sheep to the uplands and just discussing discussing amongst themselves. It's quite interesting because the railway line that we started walking along to get here, that started to cause problems with this area. So tourism started to boom when that railway line was built. And a lot of people were coming and visiting this area from the Northern cities. And people as tourists were coming and taking chips of these rocks off of them and taking them home as souvenirs. And it was around about this time that they said, look, we really need to protect this site. Otherwise, unfortunately, there's gonna be nothing left for people in the future. And now it's in the hands of either the English Heritage or the National Trust. I can't quite work out which one it is because as I say, the English Heritage have got this on their website, but National Trust seem to have the plaques here. I feel like this might be a little bit like those typical houses in Madeira that we went to go and see where we're like, well, we came, we saw it, and now we're leaving. Because 
Don't get me wrong, the actual setting that this is in is stunning. And you can see all of these different fells. So you've got Skidor with Latrig just in front of it. You've got Blencathra. I can see Walla Crag, which is what we did last summer. On the other side of the lake, you've got Cat Bells, which again, we did last summer. But past those plaques at the entrance, there's not really an awful lot of information. And it is in fact, just a whole load of standing stones. Unfortunately, it's also a little bit spoiled by the number of people that are here, which is to be expected. We're here at midday and everyone, I guess, is wanting to come and see it because of how easily accessible it is. Again, it's a little bit of our travel snobbery, but back in 2020, just after the government allowed for travel to open up, we went up to Scotland and we went to the Callanish Standing Stones and we had the entire site to ourselves. And that was really cool because it meant that we got to do some amazing photography there. Whereas I think Andy has just been a little bit disappointed in rocking up and he's like, well, the light's terrible because it's midday. There's like at least 50 people here completely ruining any kind of chance for photographs. But we're gonna keep on going with the walk, circling back now to Keswick and I'm hoping the next part of this walk might be a little bit more pleasant than that road that we had to drive up. Early historical documentation showed that there was a stone just outside of the stone circle, but as documentation went on in history, it was no longer there on the outside of the circle. Then they found this one that's right at the very edge of the field, and it's got these plow marks etched into the stone. And they seem to think that this field was probably used to grow crops as they've plowed the fields. It's then plowed part of the stone, they realized that it was in the way. And so those people who were farming this land probably just moved it off to one side so that it wasn't in the way of plowing the fields. hopes for the trail improving after the stone circle have in fact come true. Whilst we did have to walk along a country road, it was on the US map listed as being not really suitable for vehicles. So that was lovely and quiet walking down and the views that are opening out are just truly spectacular. And now we've got to a point where it's a little bit more through like country farmers fields and also footpaths that skirt along those fields. that we were going to but we've now crossed over onto the path that we walked in the opposite direction on to get up to Walla Crag last summer and if you are interested in a Walla Crag hike I will link it up here for you guys so you can watch that one next. The trail's led us back into Keswick and we've had a few essentials such as bread, milk and ham that we needed to go and pick up so we've swung back booths and we've come back and the plan is we're going to have a nice big dinner at lunchtime today so we're going to have a cauliflower and chickpea curry with some no duck spring rolls and then this afternoon we'll be heading out to Latrig and up there we'll have a packed lunch sandwich tea. <laughs> 